herd of several hundred elephants moves across the African landscape. A site like this is becoming rarer, almost a thing of the past. They need an enormous range to forage for food, and in many areas they are becoming hemmed in by human populations and domestic livestock. This, combined with tremendous pressures by ivory hunters on surviving herds, could cause the extinction of the land animal which, in every way, is the greatest. From the soles of its feet to the tip of its trunk, the African elephant is an incredible animal. Its feet support a weight of between five and 6,000 kilos. Each sole is covered with a thick, elastic, fatty cushion and can expand to spread the animal's body weight over a wide area. The trunk is perhaps the most versatile organ that any animal possesses. It can weigh up to 1,200 kilos, measures over two meters long, and possesses 40,000 muscles and tendons. It is covered with sensory hairs, so the elephant can feel the shape, texture, and temperature of objects. It has two prehensile lips at the end, which are used for gathering food and lifting it to the mouth and drinking. It can hold six liters of water, which it then squirts into its mouth. The trunk is also used for caressing, throwing dust, and vocalization. The trunk is a combination of nose, hand, and arm. It is strong enough to uproot a tree and sensitive enough to pick up tiny fruits from the ground. When the wind is right, the trunk can be used to detect a scent five kilometers away. At the tip of the trunk are the two prehensile lips which it can use to pull up a single blade of grass. Even an elephant needs a little support for all that weight some of the time. The trunk is the only nose on earth that can be coiled to pull up food and then also convey it to the mouth. Trunks are used in greeting. Just as humans shake hands, elephants put the tip of their trunks into each other's mouths. For drinking, the trunk is superbly designed. A bull needs to drink up to 200 litres of water each day. When water is in short supply, the trunk is often used in conjunction with a foot to dig beneath the dried up riverbed. Elephants ignore the huge lake of water behind them because it contains soda. They know if they dig here, the purity of the water filtered through the sand will be much better. Yet another use for the trunk, spraying mud onto the skin to protect it. African elephants often use their tusks, together with their trunk, to tear down bark from trees. They're actually modified incisor teeth. The two tusks often differ in length because the elephant uses one side more than the other, rather like a person being left or right-handed. These bulls have quite small tusks. They can reach over two meters in length, but today one weighing 25 kilos is a good size. Overhunting in the past, as well as poaching, have eliminated most of the big tuskers. The fact that an elephant grows valuable ivory has always put it at risk. Another part of the elephant's anatomy which poachers used to make money was the end of the tail. The hairs were used to make elephant hair bracelets.
the elephant uses its ears to regulate its temperature. This enormous surface area, which can be as much as two meters from top to bottom, allows the elephant to lose body heat by gently waving the ears back and forth, bringing cool air to the blood vessels in the ear and fanning the whole body. Some African elephants, which live up in the cooler mountain forests, have smaller ears. Ears serve another important function. When extended, they give an impression of large size, especially to a charging or angry elephant. The true white elephant is a creature of legends. This herd have been land bathing in white clay, which has dried on their skin. The color of an elephant often depends on the mud it last wallowed in. They often look red or black. The natural color of all elephants is gray. And after wallowing, the elephants like to protect their skin against biting insects and sunburn with dust. Again, the trunk comes into its own. Elephants live in tightly organized families, led by a mature female. The matriarch is always an experienced older female, and the group is made up of her female relatives and offspring, between eight and 15 animals. Elephants take great care of their calves, but even so, almost half the young die before they reach the age of 15. This cow has a teenage calf and a month-old infant with her. A mother feeds her young for three to four years. The calf uses its mouth, not its trunk, to suckle from one of the two nipples between its mother's forelegs. The calves continue to be dependent upon their mother until the age of 10. And from the age of four, some young females look after the younger infants. The matriarch is usually the tallest of her family group, which are all closely related. She leads the family and warns them of danger. This calf is only weeks old. It's already learning to play with food plants, perhaps in imitation of its mother. Cow's tusks are always thinner than the bull's. Young elephants need quite a lot of rest. The females cooperate in waking them up and getting them on their feet again when the family moves on. The matriarch has crossed tusks. She is constantly on the alert, and she even keeps watch over the rest of her family while they are bathing in a pool of mud. Water plays a large part in the elephant's life. They spend a lot of time wallowing. They can swim and can cross a river without difficulty. When they have calves with them, they usually keep the young ones on their upstream side to prevent any chance of them being swept away in a strong current. A defensive circle is an impressive sight. The matriarch makes an intimidating display if she feels her family, and in particular the young, are threatened.
In elephant society, the life of the bulls takes a separate course. From an early age, they begin play fighting with each other. Eventually, they become independent of their natal group. Some young males join other family groups, but others form all-male herds. Fighting between bulls is rare, because they get to know one another's strength during adolescent scuffles, information which will prove very useful later. Adult males temporarily rejoin cow herds in their home range to mate. As young adults, the bulls often live in small bachelor groups. Contrary to belief, the bulls aren't normally as aggressive as the matriarchs, though there are exceptions. The way elephants feed and what they feed on has a considerable bearing on the future survival of the species. Like many successful large land animals, they're entirely vegetarian. This one is feeding on water weed. They need to eat between 130 and 200 kilos of vegetation every day from a variety of sources, including grass, tree bark, roots and fruits. They have always preferred high quality grass, though browsing may make up a larger proportion of the diet, depending on the habitat. To consume the quantity of food they need, Elephants spend between 18 and 20 hours a day eating. The trunk can just as easily crop short grass as demolish a tree. Trees, such as acacia, are high on the elephant's list of food items. Unfortunately, elephants devastate great areas of woodland. They ring bark or push over mature trees. They uproot or destroy young ones before they can grow to regenerate Africa's dwindling forests. The forests are essential to both animals and man. Without them, erosion will accelerate. Without trees, other species of animals will disappear. Elephants have long been a problem in modern Africa. Confined and protected inside national parks, their movements and migrations limited by the activities of humans, some elephant herds are damaging their environment simply because there are too many elephants in too small an area. A big herd of elephants in a woodland they have already destroyed by ring barking. Perhaps there's something they need in the bark. Whatever the cause, once the bark is gone, the trees die. There's practically no part of a tree an elephant can't reach. Sometimes they push whole trees over with their foreheads just to get at the fruits or nuts on the upper branches. A century ago, they had room to move on and the forest could repair itself. Then, there was not the competition for land, food and water that exists between man and elephant today. This acacia tree is being gouged at the base so that its bark can be stripped off and eaten. It may well die as a result. A tree damaged in the same way some time ago now lies dead where it fell. A series of similar woodland scenes from different parts of Africa, ranging from Uganda to Zambia. All the trees have died and for the same reason, elephants.
This is a sight seldom seen these days. A huge herd of elephants on the move, accompanied by the inevitable cattle egrets. Elephants need to migrate over great distances to follow the changing seasonal availability of food and water. For thousands of years, they have always done so. In the past century, they've become hemmed in with roads, railways, towns, villages and farms. They've been hunted for their ivory and confined within national parks and reserves as safe havens, but these are not sufficient. They are destroying the land which is left to them and the problem can only get worse. With human populations expanding at an alarming rate and numbers in countries such as Kenya and Ethiopia set to double by the year 2020, does the African elephant have any future, except in small controlled communities? Elephants were once widespread across the African continent, south of the Sahara Desert. The land available to them is rapidly shrinking, and their numbers must inevitably decrease too. Small groups of elephants will, with luck, continue to survive within the national parks. But the great herds will become a thing of the past, for they really have nowhere to go now. If they try to go somewhere outside the reserves, obeying that ancient migratory urge, the croplands have got to be protected. There is still illegal poaching for ivory, even though all international trade in elephant products is banned. National parks have shot whole herds to protect the woodland habitat. It's considered more humane to kill a whole herd, young and old, rather than to kill animals at random, leaving shattered family groups. Either way, it's a wildlife tragedy. Attempts were made to build fences from old railway lines to keep the elephants inside the national parks, but it was a hopeless task. Elephants can uproot a length of line or bend it into a plaything. One has made a gap large enough for the herd to get to an artificial water hole on a farmer's land. In this case, the farmer who didn't want elephants damaging his land didn't take the only normal option of killing them. As this bull approached the waterhole, he found himself facing a strange and unfamiliar animal. The horseman was a ranger from Itosha National Park in southwest Africa. With him were some bushman riders he had specially trained for the task ahead. The idea was to herd the elephants back into the safety of the park by rounding them up on horseback, a novel method of elephant husbandry. No one could pretend that this original and dangerous operation was going to make any difference to the larger problems facing elephants in Itosha or anywhere else. But it does illustrate the fact that conservationists all over Africa care deeply about the elephant's plight. The animal and the size of the problem are too large for easy solutions, even though a local answer was temporarily found here.
With last minute support from a conservation department helicopter, the last elephant goes back inside the Itosha National Park. The last elephant. Fortunately, that stage has not yet been reached, but the fact remains that they are in danger of extinction. Mankind is causing species to become extinct every day. The elephant would be just one of the most highly visible ones. But these large mammals are indicators of a healthy environment upon which our existence also ultimately depends. It may be inconceivable that the elephant could no longer be seen in its African homeland, but perhaps it's not impossible. <laughs>